today we have the same reinforced concrete section from tutorial uh, 2. It's 300 wide and it's uh, 600 high and it has an area of steel of 600 millimeters squared. But today we're going to add uh, an axial load, an externally applied axial load P to the section and it will be at some eccentricity relative to the neutral axis E. Uh, this uh, centroid I've drawn here at 305.8 was determined from uh, tutorial uh, 1, uh, 1.1, 1 .1, where we uh, looked at the uh, neutral axis for an uncracked section. And if, if we apply an axial load right there at that point, it will it will mean that there's no bending. It'll be pure compression in that point. So that's what I've I've drawn that. <coughs> so uh, the way we relate axial load uh, to moment resistance is by stepping or, or varying the, the neutral axis location and then finding the axial load and moment for that neutral axis location. So we're going to step through the section through this height and, and just vary the neutral axis just like I've shown here. So this we're always going to assume that this, the maximum stress in the concrete in the linear elastic range the maximum is 10 MPa. We're just arbitrarily assuming that it depends on what the concrete is. So in all these cases here, it's going to be uh, 10 MPa. <coughs> and then when the uh, neutral axis uh, is shifting, we see that the area of steel, or I mean the, the, the force in the steel is, is decreasing. So we're going to plot all that in, the, in a chart form for different values of C. So, but the first thing we got to do before anything is really derive the equations of statics that describes this interaction between axial load and moment. So let's let's start that. So we have the force in the concrete. And that's equal to uh, one half of ten MPA. This is a triangle here. One half of ten MPA. times uh, C times B which is 300 and then we can uh, just simplify that equation that's going to be well it's going to be 5 1500 C we don't need a, a calculator for that 1500 C and then the force in the steel. Well, actually, before we do force steel, we've got to get the relation between the stress here and the stress in the uh, steel. So uh, it's a similar triangles problem. It's Fs over n is to uh, this distance, which is 550. If that's if this is 50 here, and that's 600, then the distance from here to here is 550. So 550 minus C and uh, that is what F of C which is 10 MPa is to um, C and from that we can uh, derive what Fs is the stress in the steel in terms of the stress in the concrete F of steel would be um, 10 well it would be uh, yeah, 10 MPa uh, times 550 minus C uh, divided by C times N and uh, N is uh, 8.11 in the previous uh, tutorial we, we calculated that the modular ra ratio of the concrete uh, of the steel versus the concrete and uh, once we have this we can calculate the force in the steel force in the steel is just the area of the steel which is uh, 600 millimeters squared times the stress in the steel so it, I'll put in directly this uh, equation here it's uh, 10 times 8.11 which is uh, 80, well I'll just say 10n I'll call it 10n uh, times 550 minus C divided by C times the area of steel which is 600 millimeters squared 
and we can simplify that further. We can say 10 times n, which is 8.11 times 600. That's 48,660. So that's going to be uh, 48,660 times 550 minus c divided by c. So that's uh, your first equation is force in the concrete. Your second equation is force in the steel, force in the concrete, force in the steel. And then the third equation, the P, which is part was, is a, a point for the graph now. That's why I've highlighted as yellow. We're going to compare these two values on the graph. The uh, axial load is just uh, the residual, the leftover, between force in concrete and force in steel, right? We have a force in concrete here, FC, and we have a force in steel here, FS. And then whatever the difference is between that is taken by P. So P equals the force in the concrete minus the force in the steel. And then uh, we also can now calculate equation 4, which is the uh, moment. And this side, for the externally applied moment, it's due to uh, P times E. Uh, we're taking moments about the uh, floating neutral axis here. So P times E. And on the other side of the equation, the internal forces, we got the force in the concrete. And that's, they're counteracting each other. So force in the concrete, which is from this, times uh, the centroidal distance of this uh, stress distribution to the neutral axis, which is 2 thirds C times 2 thirds C. And then plus because this, they're all going, and the, they're, bo they're both going counterclockwise. This is counterclockwise, this is counterclockwise, so we add them. Plus the force in the steel times the area, uh, I'm sorry, force in the steel times this distance here, from here to here, which is this distance, D, 550, minus this distance, C. So 550 minus C. And then from that, we can get equation 5, which is going to give us our eccentricity. We'll be able to calculate E now. And E will just be, from this equation, M divided by P equals E. Now we, we solve for M, right, from, from that. But we also know M is equal to P times E. So E is equal to M divided by P. And then finally, the most important is to trans transform uh, the eccentricity from this axis down to this axis. So we are, it's, uh, it's, it's very, pretty easy to do because we, we know that uh, the distance uh, from here to here, we're, we're assuming it to be, we're calling it, we're not assuming, we're calling it E prime. And that's going to be equal to this E distance plus this which is 305 minus this, which is C, 305 minus C, so 305.8, sorry, 305.8 minus C. We're going to want to plot M prime relative to E prime. M prime is just going to be the axial load now, P times E prime. So now, we, now we've developed all the equations, and, and all it's left to do is to choose uh, neutral axis locations. We can start at 150 and work our way through the section.